Uh, I guess this is going to be part seven of the Holy Days series. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be on the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, some people say that this picture is the millennium. Well, millennial... Uh, Milli has reference to thousand. You ever heard of a millimeter? Well, that's a thou one thousandth of a meter, which is approximately a little bit longer than a yard. Uh, those of you that are in Europe, yeah, you know what a, a meter is. But Americans, we're kind of, we're not there yet. Uh, a meter is slightly larger than a yard, three foot. So basically, tabernacles kind of, sort of, uh, is like the millennium when the earth will be ruled by Christ. And uh, his angels and his saints will be uh, his subjects. So let's go to Leviticus and uh, 23 and verse 33, we'll start reading. All right, Leviticus 23, verse 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord. Now, people are going to be, some people are going to be celebrating tabernacles in the kingdom. Believe it or not, they will. I'm going to prove it, God willing. The 15th day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work thereon. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord on the eighth day. So the first day and the eighth day. Okay. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly. So it's going to be a, a gathering of his people. A solemn assembly. And ye shall do no servile work thereon. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon this day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, beside your gifts and beside all your vows, Beside all your free will offerings which ye give unto the Lord, and in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the lamb, land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, Branches of palm trees and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Now, remember when Christ went into Jerusalem um, after the last, uh, well, let's see, when he rode into Jerusalem on the, the foal of an ass, a colt? Yeah, and everybody took palm branches and strawed the ground. Oh, yeah. I wonder if this is tied in with it. I think so. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees and branches of palm trees and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths, booths, B-O-O-T-H-S, seven days, all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Uh, 
I'm going to go back and cover booths in a second. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. So what, what Chaplain Bob, what in the world are booths? Well, you ever go to a flea market and there's a booth? You know, this one sells pies, this one sells vegetables, this one, this booth sells fruits, this one sells uh, hand-knitted whatever, you know. All right, so what is a booth? It's a noun. Hebrew, Beth. Uh, the word Beth means house. So if you know anybody named Beth, her name means house. Um. It's a house or shed built of boards, boughs of trees, or other slight materials for a temporary residence. Well, guess what? A tent would be considered a booth. It was a temporary dwelling place, a temporary residence, because you're on the move. Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years until they got to the land of Canaan. And then they said, okay, go in there and kill off all those giants and Canaanites and uh, go live in their houses. We're going to rededicate the land to the Lord. That's what a booth is. Now, apply that to our temporary abode here on earth. You know, if you live to be 85 years old, which is... A respectable age to live uh, per the thousands of years that's a very very temporary you know time and um, the rich man who went to hell when Jesus spoke of the rich man and Lazarus he's been in hell for probably around 2,000 years or more. And uh, those that the Lord's going to give eternal life, well, they're going to live forever. So what is 85 years to forever? You know, time won't even be counted anymore. But this study is going to be on, you know, you're talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Some people call it booths, but uh, this is going to be tied in with the millennial, the, the thousand year reign of Christ. So let's get going here. All right, it's called the Feast of Tabernacles. What is tabernacle? It's a noun. It's from Latin. It means a tent. Uh, Numbers 24, verse 5, or Matthew 17, verse 4. And this is why I like Webster's 1828. He gives you Bible definitions. So, boom. There you go. Uh, a tent. A temporary habitation. Among those, uh, Judah, it was a movable building uh, so contrived as to be taken to pieces with ease and reconstructed for the convenience of being carried during the wanderings of the Israelites in the wilderness. It was of a rectangular figure uh, 30 cubits long, 10 broad, and 10 high. The interior was divided into two rooms by a veil or curtain. Uh, it was covered with four different spreads or carpets. Also applied to the temple, Psalms 15 and verse 1. A place of worship, sacred place. Our natural body is a tabernacle, 2 Corinthians 15, 1, 2 Peter 1 and verse 13. God's gracious presence or the tokens of it, Revelation 21 and verse 3. Uh, tabernacle, verb, intransitive, to dwell, to reside for a time, time, to be housed, as we say, Christ tabernacled in the flesh. I love Webster's 1828. Absolutely love this book. Unbelievable. All right, now, uh, when, uh, when Christ returns in glory, we will read in Revelation chapter 20, 
verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. I've actually had people tell me the devil and Satan are two different beings. Uh, I don't think so. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now, people, this thousand years, there's a reason for this thousand years. And I'm going to show you what it is. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Ah, now, why is he going to be bound for a thousand years and then loosed for a little season? Well, there's a reason for that. So, let's get to work. All right, let's read verse 4, Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not, not worshipped the beast, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Uh, well, you know what, people? This is just the introduction to the kingdom. That doesn't mean a thousand years and then, you know, Something's different's going to happen. No. But the rest of the dead, uh, this is talking about the uh, those that didn't accept Christ, those that rejected the gospel of grace, okay? But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection there's only two resurrections in the bible there's the resurrection of the just now i'm talking about after after the two witnesses appear okay i'm i'm speaking after the two witnesses appear there's only two resurrections to come resurrection one is the just those that are justified in Christ. Resurrection number two, those that are damned. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death hath no power. Ah, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We're talking about reign as in ruling, not uh, water coming from the sky and the clouds. No, not that kind of reign. Verse 7. Now listen to this. And when the thousand years are expired, now this is where they, they call the thousand years, they call it the millennium. Millie has reference to thousand. They call it the millennium. Okay, it's just a Latin word that means thousand. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay. And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Ah, so wait a minute. Uh, Chaplain Bob, I'm confused. If, if these are all godly saints and Satan's bound for a thousand years, why is it now that Satan gets released 
And then he's gathering all these nations from the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. I thought all these people were saved and with the Lord. They're the saints. Why are they going to fight the Lord? Well, the saints of God are not going to fight the Lord. I'm confused. Where are all these people coming from? Well, I think these are children that were aborted. We'll get we'll we'll do more on that later. We'll do more on that later. And when the thousand years years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints and compassed or surrounded and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, which is New Jerusalem, right? And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Boom. Oh, that was a quick battle. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now I've had people ask, uh, is hell for a certain amount of time or is it forever and ever? Honestly, for people, I don't know. I could make an argument either way, but I do know this. The beast, the false prophet, and the devil, Satan, are going to be thrown into the lake of fire and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. I wouldn't want to be them. Alex Parsons Project, I wouldn't want to be like you. All right, and at the end of the thousand years, after this little second rebellion, um, so first there was a rebellion in heaven. Satan and his angels were cast out to the earth. I hope you know what I'm talking about. Maybe I should take a look real quick. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. War in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought it in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. All right. So there was a war in heaven, and now there was just a war on earth. Revelation 20 and verse 11. Now, at the end of a thousand years, uh, during the first resurrection, at the beginning of the thousand years, believers, the saints, are resurrected. After the thousand years are over, is the second resurrection. And that or those are the damned. This is called the great white throne judgment in church circles. So, Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Um... Now, your salvation is based upon your faith in Christ. But your position in the kingdom is going to be based on your works. 
somebody that labored for the Lord all his life is going to be given a higher position. Somebody that just believed and never did much of anything, eh, well, maybe they're going to be the street sweeper. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if we're going to need street sweepers, but, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Let me tell you something, people. There's going to be a whole lot of resurrected people coming up out of the Pacific from World War II. You know, I was watching an old World War II movie that was writ, uh, done in the 40s. And the Navy chaplain was uh, reading these very verses right out of the Bible. Recognized it instantly. And then they slid the body over the side of the ship into the sea. Boy, I tell you, you don't see stuff like that anymore. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right, so if all these are uh, at the during the millennium, you got all these saved people. Why is there a war on earth? Where, where do all these people that follow Satan to fight against Jesus, where do they come from? Wait a minute, I thought all these people were saved. Well, uh, okay, well, uh, that's a good question, Chaplain Bob. Can you answer it? Well, stick with me and I'll see what I can do. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 22 and verse 23. Now, there are two major groups of Jews. There were the Sadducees, which, uh, according to verse 23, they say there is no resurrection. And then you had the Pharisees, and the Pharisees were, uh, they believed in the resurrection, but their holy book was the Babylonian Talmud. So, the tradition of the elders, as Jesus called it back in his day. All right, Matthew twenty-two twenty-three. 23. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, you know these people are being sarcastic. Master, Moses said if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed, or children, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first when he had had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Wherefore, in the resurrection, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Huh? Can you tell us that, Mr. Smart Jesus? So, here it is. This woman had had seven husbands. Verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. You know what that word err? That, uh, that's where we get the word error. As in error. 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 You know when your computer says error? It ain't working properly. Jesus said, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. You guys are wrong. You don't know the scriptures and you don't know God's power. For in the resurrection, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. 
And uh, a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, angels can't have ch sex. They can't have children. And they'll leave out that last two words. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. See, see, your, your sons of God in Genesis 6 is wrong. Angels are... Angels can't have sex. They can't have children. But they leave out those last two words. But are, the, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Well, if, you know, didn't we just read where the angels were cast out of heaven? A third of them. Satan's angels were cast out. Uh, yeah, not all the angels are in heaven, people. Verse 31, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken by you, by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? When you try to trick Jesus, you're in trouble. I mean, you know, the Sadducees, that shut them up. You see, the Sadducees only believed the first five books of the Bible. They were supposedly the Levitical priesthood that took care of the uh, temple worship. So they only accepted Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, specifically Leviticus. They didn't accept the rest of the Bible. They didn't accept the Psalms. They didn't accept Isaiah. They didn't accept Jeremiah. They didn't accept Proverbs, Joel, Joshua. None of those, you know, 1st, 2nd Kings, Chronicles. No, none of those books. We don't believe them. That was their motto. But the Pharisees did. Verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he'd put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Oh, I know I've read this a million times, but we're going to read it again. When it says they're tempting him, they're trying to trick him. He said, Master, so here is a lawyer, a doctor of the law. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Love the Lord. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Guess what? That puts a nail into the, the coffin of the Hebrew roots people. But we got to keep the Sabbath and the holy days and all the other 600 and something laws. No. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. Nothing about keeping the Sabbath. Jesus is the Sabbath. All right, so. Let's go to, let me see if I can figure this one out. All right, yeah, sometimes I have to pause and, uh, look things up all right let's go to isaiah chapter 11. i did an entire playlist series on isaiah isaiah is the most quoted book in the uh, new testament well from the old testament a lot of prophecy people a lot of prophecy Isaiah 11, verse 1, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
Uh, who was Jesse? Jesse was the daddy of a kid named David. Yeah. You ever heard of David? Yeah, he took a sling and killed a giant named Goliath. He became king of Israel. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And who's the branch? Christ. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Oh, this is speaking of Christ. Christ came from the line that King David did. There's a reason why all that genealogy is in the Bible. There's a reason for it. You know, God made a covenant with his people. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, Christ, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Oh yeah. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Now listen carefully. Verse 6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. Now, people will say, oh, the Mandela effect. Satan went back in his little time machine and he changed the word wolf from the word lion. Oh, oh the Bible's been changed. Satan, Satan went back in his time machine. He used CERN over in Switzerland and went back in time and changed the Bibles. You know where the lion lay down with the lamb? It was a song from, uh, I think it was the 20s or the 30s. And Elvis Presley sang that song on the Ed Sullivan Show. Millions of people watched it. And then pastors started using Lion with the Lamb in their sermons. That's what people remember, not from the Bible. You know, think about it. If, if Satan could go back in, in time and change the Bible... That makes God a wimp. Really. And I don't know. You know, it's just, that's what, you get in trouble when you listen to other people. Stick with the Bible. I don't see Mandela effect here in the Bible. Thus saith the Lord, Satan winneth back and timeth with his time machineth and uh, changeth the Bible. No. Uh, don't listen to that garbage, people. All right, so this is talking about the kingdom. All right, it says that God's going to rule the world in righteousness, okay? Didn't we just read that? Yes, we did. Verse 4, But the righteous shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Listen carefully. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. People, I don't see lions eating straw like the cows and the oxes. So this is, has to be the future. This has to be the ki children uh, in the, uh, the, ki the kingdom. 
the, the reign of thousand year reign. And it says in verse six, and a little child shall lead them. All right. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. What's an asp? It's a deadly viper. It's a dangerous snake. Didn't is in legend, didn't Cleopatra take an asp to her breast and let it bite her so that she would die? Suicide? Yes. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged, chi winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. den. Another poisonous, venomous snake. Venomous. They shall not hurt. They shall not hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the future, people. You know, when, the, when you see a lion eating straw, you'll know it's the kingdom. All right, um, wait a minute, Chaplain Bob, I'm confused. It says that in the believers in the resurrection don't get married and don't have children. They're like the angels in heaven. Where are these kids coming from? I mean, it's talking about suckling children and a little child shall lead them and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Where are these children coming from? Well, I... I, you know, the Bible doesn't specifically say, but my educated guess is that these are children that died in childbirth. These were aborted. There's, do you know how many millions of children are aborted in the USA? Uh, well over 50. I was reading between two to three million children every year are aborted in the USA. Abortion's been legal since 1972 or 3. You do the math. 50 years. Uh, well, close to 50 years. You know, figure 2 million a year for 50 to be on the conservative side. Let's just, for a round figure, say 65 to 85 million children aborted. What about Australia? New Zealand, England, Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Russia. How many millions of children were aborted worldwide? How many children died in childbirth? How many children died before they reached the supposed age of accountability? You know, if you, a child dies at three, God's not going to throw them into hell because they didn't accept Jesus. No, they're going to get a chance to grow up, be given a body, have a chance to grow up without Satan, who's going to be bound for a thousand years. And they're going to have a chance to grow up and be taught the right way without Satan. After the thousand years, Satan will be loosed He'll go out and just like he persuaded the fallen angels to follow him and rebel against God, so will these children do the same thing. They'll believe Satan over the Lord. Does that make sense to you? I hope so. Uh, if I, you know, there's going to be children in the kingdom and it's not going to be believers having these children. These children exist. They got to come from somewhere. Where are they coming from? Well, if you're a Mormon, uh, it's, it's because you're a god with your wives having spirit babies on a planet, maybe next to Col Coleb, Colob, whatever they call it. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not a Mormon or a moron. So, Verse 9, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain.
for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Yeah, a thousand years of rest. That's going to be glorious. Uh, let's see. All right, verse 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. What islands of the sea? How about Greece? How about England? Verse 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel. Remember, Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced Israel, but not Judah. And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim. Now, Ephraim was the main tribe of northern Israel. And Israel and Judah had wars against each other. Different land, different people, different kings, and they fought each other. So when you hear a demon nominational preacher say, well, they're all the same, they're all Jews, uh, they don't know what they're talking about or they're deceivers. Take your pick. Well, the Lord will decide one day. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. But they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together, and they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it. In the seven streams and make men go over dry shod and there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt all right let's go to Isaiah 65 verse 17 for behold I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner being an hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect, mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. Well, that ain't yet, so it's got to be future. And dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. So this is what's going to happen in uh, the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ, which is only the introduction, people. This is only the introduction to the kingdom, which is going to be forever. So whatever things that you got to suffer now is going to pale in comparison to what the Lord has to offer in the future. Remember Jesus said in his father's house are many mansions. I bet you it's going to make uh, Kenneth Copeland's mansion look like a uh, 
an outhouse. What do you think? All I know is Kenneth Copeland's teachings stink like an outhouse, but uh, who am I to judge, right? All right, everybody. Now, um, we covered a little bit about the um, children in the kingdom, and they don't come from people with resurrected bodies. Now, there's another thing I just thought about. Suppose the Lord comes back and a child is four or five years old. I mean, they're not expected to uh, believe in Jesus and have a resurrected body. And yet the Lord's not going to throw them in hell for not accepting them. So will they just be um, transferred from this present world to the new earth and new heavens? Uh, that's kind of how I look at it. I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but, you know, what do you do with a five-year-old? You know, so uh, that's another thing, too. So there'll probably be children living in this present time when the Lord arrives who will be transferred to the new heavens and the new earth and be given a chance to grow up and either accept the Lord or reject the Lord. And then, uh, like I like the Bible mentions, the uh, there'll be a thousand years that Satan will be bound and then he'll be released and then he'll go out into the nations and deceive them and then there'll be uh well war on heaven and then war on earth well there was a war in heaven but there'll be another war on earth and then uh the lord will destroy those that uh decided they didn't want to be with him now the thing is uh if you read ezekiel chapter 40 we're just going to breeze through this because this is a an entire study in and of itself and I obvious I do not feel I understand this well enough to teach it and I don't honestly I don't think this is that big of an important of a topic I uh, you know what happens during the millennial reign of Christ a thousand years uh, the Lord's gonna have teachers for that tell everybody what he expects them to do so learning about it now is just not that important the important thing is to get people not to take the mark of the beast if we are indeed if the generation that uh, actually sees this come to pass i don't know if we will be but it wouldn't surprise me if we are all right ezekiel chapter 40 now, Israel, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not Israel, Ju Judah. I'm pretty sure it's Judah here. Was taken into captivity by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. If memory serves me correctly, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah were contemporaries. All right, so... Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 40. We're just going to skip around a little bit. I'll read a few things here and there. Uh, according to a lot of people that claim to be Bible scholars, this Ezekiel temple will be during the thousand year reign of Christ. And some believe that there will actually be animal sacrifices being done. Well, if Christ fulfilled the animal blood sacrificial laws by being the perfect sinless lamb of God, why are they going to be doing sacrifices in the kingdom? Well, that has to be for the people that were not given resurrected bodies. I That would be my guess. 
And if anybody has a better theory than that, I would be much appreciated, you know. But uh, this is that's my guess. Now, the thing is, uh, there were three holy days that the Lord required his people to present themselves before him, to present themselves and assemble themselves. Passover and unleavened bread was one of them. And um, tabernacles was another one. Uh, let's see. And uh, Pentecost was another one. So, you know, they were to make, well, some people call it, a, you know, pilgrimages. Um, so you had Passover, Pentecost, and tabernacles. Or some people call it booths, tents, whatever. Uh, Pentecost was called the Feast of Weeks. And then uh, Passover, you know, unleavened bread. Those were the three times of the years that people were required to go to uh, Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, so, and worship the Lord. All right, so, Ezekiel chapter 40. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, so here it is. Nebuchadnezzar had uh, grabbed them and taken them away. Um, so Ezekiel was a contemporary with Daniel, it seems, and other people say Jeremiah also. I'm not sure about Isaiah, but I suspect. That they were, uh, he was a contemporary with Isaiah also. In the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth month, uh, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year after that, the city was smitten. In the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. In the visions. All right, so they are in the captivity. And it says, in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. Verse 2. In the visions of God brought me, brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which was as the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed and he stood in the gate and the man said unto me son of man behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thine heart upon all that i will show you thee for uh for to the intent that i might show them unto thee art thou brought thither declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. Uh, it's, well, let's see. And then you can read uh, the rest of it. He describes the building in some type of detail. All right, let's take a look at chapter 41. We're just going to skip around. That's all we're going to do. Uh, verse 20. From the ground unto above the door were cherubims. Angels. Type of angel. And palm trees made and on the walls of the temple. Now remember, he's having some kind of a vision or something. The Lord took him and is showing him this stuff. And he's was told put it you know tell everybody about this so he's writing it down in his book and on the wall of the temple now they're in babylon right now there is no temple it was burned it was destroyed 
So this has to be some type of future at the time he was making this. Now, according to historians, uh, the temple that Jesus was looking at when he went and taught in the temple, this is not it. So if this wasn't existed in the past or in the present or in the time of Christ, it has to exist in the future. Now, either this will be what the you-know-who's rebuild or it's in the kingdom. And I'm of the opinion it's in the kingdom. So, I don't know. 100%. I don't know 100%. So, verse 21. The posts of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. All right, let's skip to uh, Ezekiel 43. This is why I believe it's future in the kingdom. Ezekiel 43, verse 1. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the Lord of Israel, the glory of the God of Israel. And uh, listen, people, don't fall. When people are talking about the glory of the Lord, don't fall for that she kind of stuff. You know, S-H-E. K-I-N-A-H, the she kind of. Boy, that stuff has infected the church. Uh, if you don't know who the she kind of is, it comes from the, uh, well, take the word cab, and then take the word for the name of the Muslim god Allah, you know, cab, and then Allah, put them together, cab, and Allah, yeah, and that's where the she kind of comes from. The feminine side of God, they say. Well, maybe the feminine guy of, actually, the feminine side of their God. You ever look at Baphomet? Uh, it's got a goat head, breasts of a woman, uh, and the lower part is of a man. What do they call that? Androgynous? Yeah. So it's a goat-headed man-woman. Breasts of a woman and, you know, from the waist down, it's a man. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's, the Shekinah is their God. No, the Holy Spirit, which, well, they claim it's the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit in my King James Bible is referred to as he, not she. So, you know, th that's where it comes from. And uh, if you want to, you could look up C-H-A, that's part of a word, and then bad, B-A-D, Take those two words together, bad, and then put C-H-A in front of it. And then um, type in um, Shekinah, S-H-E-K-I-N-A-H, and you can see what where this comes from. doesn't come from the Bible. It comes from the minds of Rab eyes that's where it comes from it doesn't come from the bible all right so ezekiel 43 verse 1 afterward he brought me to the gate even the gate that looketh toward the east and behold the glory of the god of israel came 
from the way of the east, and his voice was like the noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. Uh, this is Revelation-type language here. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. Behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. And my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places. Now, does this sound like uh, the past or the present when he's doing this? No, it's this is future, people. Verse 8. In their setting of their threshold, by my thresholds, and their post, by my post, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations, that they have committed, wherefore I have consumed them in mine anger. Now let them put away their whoredom and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. So they're talking about a temple here. And the Lord dwells in it. All right, let's go to uh, Ezekiel 43. Skip down to verse 18. Now listen to this. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon. And thou shalt give to the priests, the Levites, that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me, saith the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns of it and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about, thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. And, you know, and then they start talking about the Levitical uh, priesthood's duties uh, for the things, you know, the, the blood sacrifice. Now, unless this happened in Herod's day, Okay, they're in the captivity. Jerusalem's destroyed. Unless this temple happened in Herod's day, and it didn't, then it has to be the future. This has to be the millennial, thousand-year reign of Christ, the temple. Well, what's this temple for? Well, the Old Testament laws were are going to be in force for those that are not... Uh, given new resurrected bodies. You know, the, the young children that grow up, this is what they're going to have to do. 
unless, of course, they have faith in Christ and then they're born again of the Holy Spirit. And then I suppose they'll be given resurrected bodies. But uh, there's going to be there's going to be a rebellion when Satan is loosed after the thousand years. All right, let's go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 48. It's the last chapter. Um, if you read the first part, uh, verse 1 on, it talks about the inheritance of the the land inheritance of the tribes of Israel. So, verse 29. This is the land which ye shall divide by lot unto the tribes of Israel for inheritance, and these are their portions, saith the Lord God. And these are the goings out of the city on the north side, 4,500 measures. And the gates, listen to this, listen to this carefully. And the gates of the city shall be after the names of the tribes of Israel. Three gates northward, one gate of Reuben, one gate of Judah, one gate of Levi. And at the east side, 4,500 and three gates, one gate of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. And at the south side, 4,500 measures and three gates. One gate of Simeon, one gate of Issachar, and one gate of Zebulun. 34. At the west side, 4,500 with their three gates. One gate of Gad, one gate of Asher, and one gate of Naphtali. It was round about 18,000 measures, and the name of the city from that day shall be, The Lord is there. All right. This is, you know, this is just like, uh, I think it's, I think it's Revelation 22. Let's take a look. Uh, close, but no cigar. Revelation 21. Verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Twelve gates, the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And we just read that in Ezekiel 48, right? On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Ah, you know, Ezekiel 48 lines right up with uh, Revelation chapter 21. Uh, I would love somebody that knows a lot more than I do to uh, do a commentary on Ezekiel. I have considered it, but I just, I don't know it. That's a hard book. Um, I, I yeah, Ezekiel and Daniel to me are like the two hardest books in the Bible. And I've dabbled in trying to explain Daniel, but uh, Ezekiel is pretty wild, and I just don't think I know it well enough to even consider uh, trying to explain it. So there's going to be a temple in the thousand-year reign of Christ, and it's not going to be for believers with resurrected bodies. We already had our sacrificial lamb christ jesus the lamb slain from the foundation of the world right oh yeah but the children that were aborted that grow up uh that's probably what this temple will be all about that's probably what the levitical priests will be doing 
sacrificing for them. And you got a choice between the two covenants. You can have the old covenant with the blood, or you could have the new covenant with the blood of Christ, which is the better covenant according to the book of Hebrews. All right, let's read Zechariah. Z-E-C-H-A-R-I-A-H. Uh, there's a Zephaniah and there's a Zechariah. This is Zechariah. I always get the two mixed up. I don't know why. Maybe one day I'll figure it out. But until then, Zechariah. Z as in zebra, E as in echo, C as in Charlie, H as in Harry, A-R-I-A-H. Zechariah. Chapter 14, verse 1. This is a very, very important um, end time chapter. Zechariah is considered a minor prophet because of the size of the book. All right, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Ah, so this is the end time, right? And I spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. So this could be partly true in the days when Babylon took Jerusalem. It could be true when Christ returns. And it could also be true when at the end of the thousand years when Satan is loosed and he, Satan gathers all the people to go against Jerusalem and then fire comes down from the sky to devour them. Uh, the Bible talks about in things in cycles. Verse 3, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Ah, remember the Mount of Olives, the uh, Olivet Discourse, as they called it, his teaching? Well, his feet are going to touch the Mount of Olives again one day. When he returns in glory. And this time he's not coming as a lamb. He's coming as a lion. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Uh, have you ever heard people say, oh, well, when the Lord returns, he comes to the Mount of Olives and then it splits? Well, this is where they get that from. Verse 5. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. All the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Living waters. Oh, Chaplain Bob, where have I read that before? Uh, let's see. Well, that verse just ties into Revelation 7 and verse 17. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay, so living waters. Uh, 
Uh, back to Zechariah 14 and verse 8. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Oh, okay. Well, that hasn't happened yet. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rimmon south to Jerusalem. It shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate unto the corner gate and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. Now listen to this carefully. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, their flesh shall consume away. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Uh, I don't, you know, every time I read this, I always think of. Uh, the Terminator movie, I think number two, I think, yeah, number two, where uh, Sarah Connor's in the um, Linda Hamilton uh, is over by the playground and then the, the nuke hits the city and then she's standing there and the flesh just disappears and you see the skeleton for a few seconds and then it blows away too. Uh, yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's going to, what's going to happen. I'm just saying that's, you know, this is the kind of symbolism that I see. Now, personally, I think this ties in with uh, Revelation chapter 20. Now, remember, thousand years, Christ returns. There's a thousand years of peace. Um, Satan is bound for a thousand years. And then in Revelation 20, 20 and verse 7, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Now, obviously, this is not the believers. This is the unbelieving people, you know. Uh, this is not the resurrected saints. These are probably, you know, all the people that died in childbirth, all the aborted people. Uh, they chose Satan over the Lord. So, um, verse 9. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. I think that ties right into what we just read in Zechariah. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right. Zechariah 14, verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So, fire from the Lord. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah will also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. I don't know if this is talking about uh, the millennial kingdom. This might be another time period. I'm honestly, I, I don't know. 
And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and, all, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents, as this plague. Uh, evidently, yeah, it does look like it's going to be during the Millennial Kingdom. Listen to this carefully. Verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. So in the millennial kingdom, it looks like we're going to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 17. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So you don't come up to worship the king, no rain. And it's kind of hard to grow crops when there's no rain. Verse 18. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen. The Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Verse 20. Listen carefully. In that day, there shall be upon the bells of the horses... Holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. So evidently this is the kingdom because holiness unto the Lord is not uh, here on earth, right? Verse 21, listen to this. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seeth therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And in that day, the day of the Lord, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. All those satanic hybrids are not going to be in the house of the Lord of hosts. They're not going to be there. There's a reason why the Lord said to exterminate the Canaanites. Get rid of them. Don't marry them. Don't give their sons to your daughter. Don't give their daughters to your sons. Don't you take a wife. Don't you take a husband. There are, you know... And I get people say, well, I don't know if that's right. It doesn't sound, I don't know. Angels can't have sex. And I cover that in a previous study. It always says that, uh, that in heaven, we'll be like the angels in heaven. Neither, neither married or given in marriage. And we shall be like the angels in heaven. Well, not all the angels are in heaven. I got an entire playlist on the angels that sinned, probably five, six, seven, eight hours. That proves the Canaanites were satanic hybrids. There's a reason why the Lord said, go into the land of Canaan and kill everything that breatheth. There's a reason. The Bible even says right here that there's not going to be any Canaanites, no Canaanite, in the house of the Lord of hosts. Uh, come on, people. Think about it. You know, they're born that way. What was uh, what was her name? I forget. The famous singer. The, she sang Born That Way. I don't know. She's real popular there for a while. She was called the New Madonna. I don't remember her name. Oh, yeah, Lady Gag A. Well, they call her Gaga, but I'm not Gaga about 
and she's no i don't think she's much of a lady but uh i don't know i call her lady gag a because some of her stuff makes me want to gag so all righty so feast of tabernacles that's what's coming people uh i don't i don't feel i did a very good job of this particular bible study there's a lot of questions that i don't understand uh i don't have the answers but you know hey with the limited knowledge that i have this is i'm trying to give you the knowledge that i can one day in the kingdom um the real questions will be answered but until that day uh we got to put up with living here on this cesspool so all right well this is chaplain bob walker light of the world ministries all blessings praise glory and honor to god the father and his only begotten son jesus who is the christ the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world all blessings praise glory and honor in jesus precious name amen